In this video, we're going to build a simple AI image generator app. For this project, all you need is an IDE. I'm going to use Cursor, a GitHub account, and a RunPod account. RunPod is a company that lets you host applications on GPU pods. Like AWS and Google Cloud, RunPod lets you buy space on their servers so you don't have the cost and hassle of managing the servers yourself. This lets you create serverless applications. As of now, there isn't a free tier on RunPod, but you can put in $5 into your account to get the working demo going. Once you send in the request to your serverless instance, the app will simply stop generating images and you won't be billed anything. With that said, let's look at what we're building. It's a pretty straightforward application. It's a React front-end, a Python back-end, and of course, the serverless instance is run by RunPod, which we'll link to the GitHub repo in order to build the Docker image later on. The user can input a prompt, for example, dog at the beach, click generate image, and sure enough, we get a image generated of a dog at the beach. At the time of this recording, there are much better image generation models like Flux, but for the sake of keeping costs and load times down, we're using the much lighter stability model. Okay, so that's what we're gonna build. Let's get started. To set up the project, we can clone the worker SDXL turbo repo that's maintained by the RunPod team. The link is in the description below. Once you open that, go to code and copy this command. Open the text editor of your choice. Again, I'm using cursor and navigate to the directory you wanna build the project in. I'm going to use git clone and then paste that command in and then cd into the worker. Lastly, run code dot to open it in a new window. The two key files here are the Docker file, which will run pod will use to build the image on their end and the handler dot Python file, which imports all the dependencies we need imports the stability AI SDXL turbo model and will handle the job input itself. Next, in order for our users to be able to interact with the application, we need to create a front end. So let's make sure we're in the root directory, the worker SDXL, and we're going to run npm create vt at latest front end dash dash template react. So you may need to install V, you can select yes. Um, we're gonna use the React framework here. We'll use TypeScript and it's completed. So with that, we'll CD into front end. We'll run npm install. And once that's installed, we can look at the starting code by running npm run dev and going to localhost 5173. So here we see the baseline V package. We're going to replace all this code later. So next in our front end folder, we want to create a .env file. So click front end and then click create a new file, do .env. We're going to use this to store our RunPod API key and our RunPod endpoint ID, which we'll call on the front end. For now, we'll just put RunPod API underscore key equals and run pod endpoint underscore ID equals. Save that and we'll come back to that later once we create a run pod account and a serverless endpoint. For now, let's go do back to the front end source app.tsx. And here's all that starter code that we saw earlier. To save you the time and hassle of coding along, I've added my front end code, which you can copy and paste into your project in the description below. So we'll go to my GitHub link and click the copy raw file here. Go back to your text editor, control or command A to select everything and control or command V to paste everything there. Save that. We should see the changes in our front end here. There's our interface. Obviously it's not gonna work right now because we're not connected to anything, but at least we have the front end. Next, we wanna copy over the types, the TypeScript types. 
So go to source v-env.d.ts, copy that raw file, open the corresponding file in your text editor, and paste everything in. This file just tells TypeScript that these values are going to be set as keys. You can also review the front end code here. It's React with TypeScript, so we're saying app is a React functional component. We have the prompt, which the user will input, the image URL, and the loading state. We're setting the variable API key equal to the variables that we'll put into the .env file. The .env just protects that information from being published online, because essentially we want to treat these like passwords. And we have a simple generate image prompt. If there's no prompt, it'll alert the user. It'll set the loading state and the image URL to true and null, respectively. And the bulk of the function is in here. We're going to post, send a post request to our serverless instance, JSON body. And the API key will authorize us to post to our serverless endpoint. Now, the body of the post request is the input, which is the user prompt number of inference steps. This just describes the amount of times the stability AI image model will refine the image. So it'll generate the first image, then kind of comb it over and improve. You might see it during the loading phase where it looks, you know, maybe blurry, and then it gets progressively better and better. And it happens fairly quickly, depending on what models and everything you're using. Um, but you might be familiar with that process there. Width and height are self-explanatory. That's just the pixels. Guidance scale is essentially balance between creativity and accuracy. So a low guidance scale, one through five, the model has like more freedom to generate creative and unexpected results. Uh, the image might loosely match the prompt, but it could include artistic or abstract elements. And then higher guidance scales, which are typically um, you know, six and above, um, it strongly adheres to the prompt. It focuses on a literal interpretation of the prompt, uh, and it will sacrifice creativity. The seed here is null because we don't have a base image that we're basing the input off of. We don't know what the user is going to type in, and thus we don't want to start the machine learning or the AI model with a baseline image. If you liked an image and you took the seed of that and you wanted to iterate off of it, then you'd input the seed here and that way the AI model would base the new image based off of the existing one. And then lastly, number of images, simply one. We just want to run, <clears throat> we just want one image coming off as a result of this. So here we have a try catch statement. We're going to sync this to, a, to our API endpoint, our run pod endpoint. It's going to create a base64 image, which is basically a long string that can be decoded into um, an image asset. Simple alert messages if nothing goes through. And then the actual front end itself, the title, where the user will input, the button to run the function, a uh, loading message, and lastly, the image result. Before we sign up for RunPod, we need to push our code to GitHub. But since we cloned that repo from the run pod GitHub, which we can't edit, we need to create our own repository on our account. So let's go back to GitHub. Do your username, repositories, new repository. I'm going to call this AI image generator demo. You can include a description if you like. Um, leave it as public. Do not initialize with a repository. We don't need a git ignore template and we don't need a license. So down below, we can click create repository. And we get the setup instructions. But instead of running those baseline instructions, we actually need to change the origin of the file, of the repository rather. Because this is a run pods repository, we don't have permission edits on it. We don't want to push to that repository because it's not ours. So first we need to run git, git remote remove origin, then run git remote add origin, git at github 
Dot-com. Input your username. And then whatever the name you gave your repository just now. In my case, AI image generator demo dot git. And lastly, we'll do git push dash u origin main. Okay, so now if we go back to the GitHub page and click refresh, we see our repository. And you can also see the original contributors which I'm assuming are all RunPod employees. Before we create the endpoint, we just have to make sure we push our front end up to the template now. So back in the root directory, the worker SDXL to git add all, which I've already run, but git add all like that. And then git commit dash M quotes, We'll just say add front end and then git push. Okay, so with that now, we'll have the front end on our repo. With that done, we can now begin setting up our RunPod account. So go to runpod.io, or if you'd like to support the channel, use the RunPod serverless referral link in the description below. Go to sign up. I already have an account, so I'll log in. And once you're done signing up, you should see a dashboard like this. Don't forget, if you haven't put money into the account now, you'll have to put a few dollars in. As I mentioned earlier, you won't be overbilled. Simply once your credit runs out, uh, you, won't be, you won't be able to run your application anymore, but you also won't be charged for any attempts. We really shouldn't be worried about that that much because it's a local application, but just in case. Um, so now we're going to go to serverless. I'm going to click new endpoint and then GitHub repo. <clears throat> click next and you'll likely have to link your account. And once you've done that, and once you've done that, you should see your repositories. I'm going to select the AI image generator demo that we just made and click next. So you can keep the branch. We really only have the main branch. If you named it something else, then it might default to that or just look for it there. And then for the Docker file path, because the Docker file is in the root of our directory or of our application, we can simply do dot slash Docker file. This way RunPod knows where to look to build the image for the application. We'll click next and we'll see the amount of GPUs we want to use for the application. Now you can choose based on cost here. Obviously the more GPUs you get, the more expensive it is. Um, we don't really have to worry about users burning through credit on our account since it, we're not publishing this, it's just local. So I'm going to use 48. Uh, max number of workers, you can leave it as three. I have another application because you can only use five total in my current tier. So I'm going to go to two. You can leave it for three. Scroll down. And at the bottom, you will see a create endpoint. And you just simply click that. Once you click create endpoint, you'll see pending and then it'll start building. This can take a little while. So I'm just going to fast forward to the point when it's actually created. Okay, so that one took 20 minutes to build, so it'll probably take a while for yours too. Um, you'll see these workers in progress. Um, you don't have to worry about that now. The important thing is that we at least have one going. So once you see completed in the build log, we can go to overview and you'll see the endpoint ID. Copy that, go to your .env file and paste that value without any quotation marks or anything in the RunPod endpoint ID. And then go back to your RunPod account, go to settings, API keys, and create new API key. Uh, name it anything you like. The important thing to know is that once you create the key, um, you won't be able to see it again. 
So you should store it in a safe place, uh, maybe like a local text file or something. And even with the preview of it, I can't see their original full secret key. And again, you want to treat it like a password. So don't share this with anybody. So take your key, go back to RunPod, and you can see mine now. I'm going to delete these. So by the time this is published, you can't access these API keys. Um, so save that there. So now the RunPod API key and the endpoint ID are assigned to these variables and our application should be able to use it. So now I'm going to terminate the original server with control or command C and then just yes. And then I'll run the server again and we'll go back to our application and we'll see our interface here at RunPod AI image generator. And I will type a new prompt here, like a, a skier on a mountain and generate image. So I have an error here. Okay, so I found out what the error was. Uh, we weren't able to generate an image and I was able to fix it by re-adding the V underscore to our variable names. So start in your .env. I'm guessing that V looks for the specific, you know, V underscore at the start of those variables. So just go ahead and add V underscore back into both of these in your .env, your app.tsx, and the uh, TypeScript type files there. So with those added back in, we'll terminate the server, run it again, and go back to the browser. You'll see I did a demo image there. I'll try the skier on a mountain again, generate the image, and there you go. So with that, you've built your first AI image generating app uh, with a RunPod serverless instance. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope this gets you excited about new AI apps to build in the future. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.